Are you related to uh, Luda? To an Illuminati thing. And it had to be one or the other of us. And decisions had to be made. So it was both of us, we were equal. Cat Williams has accused Ludacris of engaging in homosexual activities for financial gain with none other than Quincy Jones. It all started when Cat made some bombshell allegations during his viral appearance on Club Shay Shay. He claimed that Luda sold out to the Illuminati. That was the beginning of everything. We were on an equal footing, so it was both of us. It was necessary for one of us to clip off all of their hair because they were unable to maintain the sideburn look with the points inserted. Then, Luda responded to Kat's allegations that he was struggling with substance abuse by making freestyle attack on him. Kat, however, seemed to have been waiting for Luda to take the bait because he went all out with a freestyle of his own, exposing Luda's alleged gay affairs with some big individuals in the industry. One of those persons turned out to be ludicrous, and the other person turned out to be Cat Williams. Kat's freestyle was a complete and utter surprise to Luda. However, before I proceed, allow me to provide you with some background information. Kat made his first appearance on Shannon Sharp's podcast, Club Shay Shay, earlier this month, which is when everything got started. And when they were arguing over Kat's beef with other comedians, Shannon threw a curveball at Kat by asking him whether he and Ludacris are connected. Kat was surprised by Shannon's question. Kat then proceeded to launch a verbal assault against Luda, during which he made a series of outrageous accusations regarding the manner in which Luda attended a party hosted by the Illuminati. Kat's statement regarding the purported connection between Luda and the Illuminati was delivered with complete seriousness. And he stated that it is all tied to Luda securing a deal for the Fast and Furious movies and selling his soul for the price of $200 million. In addition, they stated that the following individual was going to receive, they were going to pay him $10 million per movie for a total of 20 films. Consequently, this is how the talk had taken place. You never have to flex when you earn every one of your Fast and Furious checks. It was determined that Ludacris was one of those individuals and Cat Williams was the other individual that was supposed to be there. A more curveball was subsequently thrown by Cat, which suggested that Luda had lost his blackness. We are going to go all out with a dark shade. However, that was not the end of it. The wild dismissal that Cat launched was directed at none other than Luda's wife. Cat wasted no time in getting to the heart of the matter. When it comes to Luda's wife, Kat didn't pull any punches when he was talking about her. He referred to her as a light-skinned, ugly face and stated that all of these black comedians and rappers who had made a deal with the Illuminati were given a light-skinned wife as a part of the agreement. It is a component of what they impart to you. I'm sorry, but I just don't get it. That doesn't bother me at all. It's true. What is the amount of money that they gave you? Who is Adam? However, Luda was not going to let all of that go unnoticed, and he came back at Kat with freestyle response, advising him to take a step back and check himself. Nevertheless, Luda has not disclosed anything in the past. As a result, the fact that he hurriedly arrived at the studio, trembling and stumbling in order to perform a freestyle. Should he declare that it is a freestyle, then it is indeed a freestyle. Must indicate that Kat's remarks struck a chord with you, honey. While he was wrapping out the beat of Kanye West's Devil in a New Dress, Luda began his diss track by addressing Snoop Dogg. He did this by giving him a shout-out. That is, preparing the groundwork for the confrontation. In response to Kat's outrageous assertions, he stated that he has never been a member of the Illuminati movement. John um, has not ever left us. John is with me. Additionally, he took a moment to pay honor to the late John Singleton, who was the director of Too Fast, Too Furious. He was the original director of the film. The compilations that arose from a stroke ultimately led to Singlestone's passing in April of 2019. Say, toot! For likes, John Singleton, may you rest in peace. In the event that you have earned each and every one of your fast and furious checks, you will never be required to flex again. The ultimate bombshell was then delivered on Cat by Luda. 
who pointed the finger of those recurrent rumors regarding Kat's problems with narcotics. It came as a complete surprise when Luda made his comments. An afro with sideburns is the look that I consider to be Hallmark style all the way through. At this point, I believe Luda has some clever bars. But the supporters are not going to let him off the hook so easily without a fight. It would appear that individuals are interpreting the story in a manner that brings to light the possibility that there is more to it than initially appears. As a result of the fact that it seems as though Kat's comments struck a chord with Luda, and as a result of the fact that Luda may be responded with a clap, the following is a quote from a supporter. You brought yourself out of retirement for the purpose of comedy? Kat was in fact being truthful when he made his statement. According to the message that was sent by another individual, Kat 2, Luda 0. I only wanted to bring to everyone's attention the fact that for him, everything revolves around materialism and reaching the highest possible position in the hierarchy by whatever means necessary. In other words, there are no standards. In the meantime, Kat's accomplishment is made significantly more valuable, dramatic, and motivating by his fairness and his tenacious perseverance on the part of the individual. To the contrary, Luda ought to have given his intentions some serious consideration before coming after Kat, because it seems like Kat was just waiting for him to respond so that he could come out blazing. Luda should have given his objectives some serious consideration. Kat made a veiled reference to an unfinished diss track that was intended to be directed at Ludacris during a recent episode of the Collect Called podcast hosted by Sug Knight. In the song, he blasted Ludacris for being a phony, accused him of being bi-curious, and get this, he accused him of sleeping with Quincy Jones. All of these accusations were placed in the song. Never been Illuminati, only Illuminati, and I only left with bitches when coming from any party. It should also be made clear that Ludacris has never stated publicly that he is gay or bisexual. In 2014, he successfully tied a knot with Yudokshi, a model who is Gabonese descent. Following the completion of his marriage, Luda was granted dual nationality and became a citizen of Gabon. Luda has two more children from prior relationships in addition to the two girls that she and her partner shared a connection with. With regard to Quincy Jones, the rumors regarding his sexuality have been around for a considerable amount of time. Quincy has consistently shut down these claims, and in an article published in the New York Times in 2012, he stated that he considers himself to be a hetero. However, there has been a great deal of conjecture over Quincy, who are supposedly young males working in the industry. There were rumors circulating a few hours ago that Quincy had engaged in sexual activity with a musician, Tevin Campbell, who had come out as gay in the year 2022. However, Tevin refuted this and referred to these claims as being revolting. In addition to this, there has been a lot of talk about Quincy reportedly trying to coerce Tupac into having sexual relations with him. This is another piece of supposition that has been going around. There were a number of ambitious plans that Tupac had in the works prior to his untimely death in the year 1996. Kadada Jones, the daughter of Quincy Jones, was the woman he was romantically involved with. Additionally, there is a rumor that he was contemplating signing with Quincy's record label while he was coming out of death row and looked at the exit door. This myth is widespread and has been circulating around for quite some time. On the other hand, there have been rumors circulating for some time now that Tupac turned down Quincy's offer when Quincy offered a proposition that was questioned from the very beginning. It has been reported that this information was made available to the general public during the interview that Tupac conducted with Angie Martinez for Vibe magazine. But at this point, things start to take a far more fascinating tone. It is possible for you to trace. There are just specific sections of this interview that can be discovered online. In addition to that, there is a substantial chunk that is missing. That interview turned out to be a marathon, clocking in at more than two hours each and every time it was conducted. On the other hand, Angie only transmitted a total of 12 minutes of the entire event when she was doing the broadcasting. 
She expressed her concern that the words made by Tupac would add gasoline to the battle between the East Coast and the West Coast, which was already as heated as a summer day at time. This was in response to a question that was posed by Billboard magazine, which inquired about the issue that she had with holding back. It is impossible, on the other hand, that Tupac was only involved in the altercation on the East Coast for a total of two hours. Furthermore, there are claims that he shared some unexpected facts with the audience. From this point on, everything began to spiral out of control. It would appear that the question and answer portion of the interview was disclosed not long ago after the untimely death of Tupac. Well, that brings us to the end of this video. Click on the next video now to find out more!